Hey, what's up high levelers? In today's video, we're going to learn about class booking calendar inside Go High Level. Now, before I jump into it, I want to briefly talk about the difference between the other calendars we have in Go High Level right now and why do we need the class booking calendar. So the most basic and simple one uh, is now called a simple calendar. It was previously called an assigned calendar where we just have one agent or one person to lead the meeting and then there's only one person booking into it. So, you know, each person or each lead will have different appointments when within the same simple calendar and this is a perfect use case for chiropractic practices or marketing agencies that only have one uh salesperson and you know they want to dedicate a specific calendar for one person only so it works perfectly in that example now we also have the round robin calendar which is kind of when you have multiple agents and then you want to round robin based on availability so let's say a lead is booking into a calendar and once they book into it, the, the calendar will auto assign it to uh, whoever is available or has priority over somebody else, and they will be assigned that lead or the appointment, right? Now, it is also called many to one calendar. So what is the difference between the round robin and class booking calendar? So in one to many calendar or the class booking calendar, you can actually host multiple people within the same invite. So a perfect example for this would be, let's say you are a marketing coach who is running a webinar on how to increase lead conversion using Go High Level, right? Now imagine you have an audience of a thousand people, you post the link to your calendar in a Facebook group or in your stories and now all these people will go to the same link but when they schedule into it whatever time slot they select all those people will be hosted under one invite so it will be one invite one appointment and now you can lead that webinar and everybody will get the link all the automations and everything so that you don't like all these people would not show up on a different appointments but just one consolidated class appointment and that is exactly why class booking is really beneficial for people who run webinars or even in-person events with multiple people in it right so now that we know the basic differences let's dive into it and see how we can configure the class booking calendar inside go high level all right so the first thing you have to do is go to the calendars option on the left side and then click on calendar settings then click on create calendar and then you'll see all these options uh, so we have to select the class booking one and now we will see all the options so the first thing you have to put in is of course the marketing calendar name so you can do like a marketing webinar and you can choose to add a description if you want uh, let's say how to uh, increase lead conversion by 25 percent using ghl so you can do something similar or you know change it up to you and then you can select a team member assign it to somebody it could be you or could be your team member who will be moderating this session then you have to choose a URL so I can do marketing webinar um, if it's available perfect if not you can you know add something else you cannot use symbols or anything like that just like the dash and the words then you can have the meeting duration so uh, if you have like a 60 minute uh, webinar you can do one hour here and then how, how many seats you want at max. So if you can only host up to 100 people into the webinar or your class, then you can do 100. That's perfectly fine. Then what will be the booking uh, availability, right? So you can choose to do it on certain days of the week. So let's say if you only do webinars on you know Wednesdays, you can uncheck all the other ones and then you can you know provide the availability. And uh, you, you know this availability is basically for when like what is the minimum the maximum time they can book into so just make sure that you do offer uh, webinars if you only offer between one specific hour you can limit the availability uh, based on that so then we have the meeting location now if you're doing an in-person event you can add the address here or the directions to google link but if you're doing a zoom meeting then you can add the link here and that will be very straightforward then you can also choose to accept payment so if you want people to pay you for the webinar or the class you, the first thing you have to make sure is that the Stripe is connected with your GHL so it can collect payments and then you can choose the amount here. So let's say you want to charge like a $9 fee from people and you can you know add why you're charging this so that when they are going to book into the calendar, uh, the calendar will ask them for the payment. It won't let them uh, move, you know, move otherwise. So I'm just going to you know, type this 
here okay perfect then you can choose to confirm it and it will actually create the calendar for you right away it will actually give you the link as well and also the embed code if you want to add it to a landing page or your wordpress site or you know any other page uh, that you have for this then you can also preview the calendar real quick so this is a very quick and easy way to make it now there are some more options that you can use uh, to customize the look of it now if i go back here uh, let's close this out you would already see that we have the marketing webinar calendar created so click on the three dots and then click on edit now as you can see that it has opened up more options for us so the first one we have which is different from the other menu is the calendar logo now you can choose to add a logo here so i'm just going to select a dummy logo for now uh, we can use that you can upload your own logo you can add it as a square or as a circle based on what kind of structure you have to your logo uh, then if you scroll all the way down you can already see that uh, we have most of the things filled out that we did initially you can call the meeting invite something so you know when you're receiving text or sending uh, people the title of the meeting or the appointment you can choose to say uh, marketing webinar with mark let's say right and then you know the, it would say their name so this will be the title of the appointment or the class booking right then you can choose the event color so that you know that color reflects it on your calendar and hit save then we have some more options on the left so I will dig into that right away so we have availability and just make sure you're saving this as you go now availability type we have standard and custom now I'll explain you the difference so let's say if you want to have a webinar or a class every Wednesday and it's gonna stay the same across different weeks right and then standard is the right availability type but if you say that I ha okay I have like custom date so I, ha I need to have a webinar this Wednesday but the next week it's going to be Friday right so in this case you can actually choose different dates and then set different times and then I can choose only certain days so I can do September 20 and then let's say I'm doing the Tuesday so next week it's going to be Tuesday and you know after that it's going to be let's say Thursday in October right so you can choose to do that if you have availability like that then if you scroll down we have a meeting intervals so what do you want the intervals to be you can do 60 minutes so if somebody is you know has an interval for eight then you know if you want it to be nine like that that should be the next interval then 60 would be right then we have meeting durations uh, once that is set up so minimum scheduling notice and date range is not available in custom booking because uh, we have custom date selected so we cannot really limit that but if you have like a standard kind of booking which I'll show you you can actually choose minimum schedule notice and then date range like how far can a person book into your calendar and then what's the minimum scheduling notice you need to have so if you have a webinar on Friday they cannot book it on the day they will need to book it you know 24 hours ahead of that so that is how that works then you can also choose seats per class perfect time if you have consecutive and you want to just get a breather between that that's okay now we'll click on save here then the next setting we have is forms and payments and this is where we can customize uh, what we saw here so like if I go here this is the calendar without me setting anything so we have like some default feature fields which is first name last name phone email and additional information right now you can choose to add custom questions if you want for that you'll have to create a form in go high level and once you have that you will see that in the drop down also you can pre-populate or sticky contact fields so the next time they're you know booking into it their fields will be automatically populated then we have consent box you can customize the wording of it and then we have the confirmation page so you can choose to display a message once they have booked or you can redirect them to a different page of your landing page or your website link whatever you want to do with it and then you can also add the pixel id which is optional but it's a great way to track webinar registrations you know so you can actually add the pixel id if you already have one on facebook and then it will actually track it the the webinar registrations as well and then you can auto confirm new calendar meetings so you don't have to manually approve them which is good you can choose to accept payments as we talked about it earlier and then hit save then the last couple of options we have uh, we have notifications and additional options so let's dive into that so here we have the you know we can enable notifications so let's say you want to send and also receive the acknowledgement email so what you would do is you will check box it for uh, contact and then assign users and you can choose to alert more emails as well if you want to CC some people in not CC but you know send it as a perfect email to some other users or your administration team right you can choose to do that and you can also allow Google Calendar to send invitations uh, so that when somebody books into it it also gives them an option to 
you know, accept that invite and so that, you know, it will be added to their Google Calendar automatically, which will be perfect. Then we can hit save and the last step is customizations. So in customizations, we can actually add a calendar cover image. So this is a great way to even make your uh, calendar look great and more branded. So you can choose to add an image here. You can also show seats per slot as you saw in my preview link uh, previously that it was showing up how many seats are left. So if you want to do it, you can do that. It's a real time like stats. So you just make sure it, you know, you cannot override it. So if you choose not to show it, you can actually disable it. Then if you want to style the you know, calendar in a certain way to apply CSS or JavaScript, you can choose to add that here if you want. And then we have the cancellation and reschedule thing. So if you want people to reschedule or cancel the meeting, you can, you know, you can enable this option. But reschedule usually does not, it's not a perfect use case for specifically webinar. So you can choose to disallow it if you, if you want and then hit save. So once this is all done, uh, your marketing webinar is ready to go you can actually get it embedded on a landing page. So if in, in order to do that again, you click on the three dots here. Then you can either copy the permanent link if you want to send the link directly to the, you know, directly to somebody to the calendar, or you can embed the code. So you can embed it inside a Go High Level page or WordPress. If you're doing like a funnel or a website on Go High Level, it's pretty stro you know, straightforward. You have an element for the calendar. You won't have to embed it, but if you're doing an external website, which is on WordPress or hosted somewhere else, you can actually choose to embed it as well. All right, so that was all about class booking calendars. I hope you found some value. So do check it out and have a good day ahead.